Well, hello, and welcome to another edition of Tribulation Ready Survival. I'm Michael, and today's episode is about physical preparedness. So, let's talk about this. Um, if you have to flee, whether it be for a natural emergency, like a tsunami, or a tornado, or a hurricane, or an earthquake, or a blizzard, or even um, in a survival situation that has to do with the collapse or tribulation, um, you're going to have to have some physical fit fitness. Um, you're physically going to have to do things that are beyond what you do in your normal day. For most people, let's put it that way. Um, you know, if you're a biathlon uh, athlete, or if you run uh, marathons, or if you... Uh, you know, do some heavy duty work during the day, like, I don't know, working in an oil field or, um, you know, really heavy construction or something like that. You might be at a, at a physical fitness level that, um, you're just ready to go. Um, I know that I was not, um, and I'm probably still never going to get to that point, but I'm sure working towards it. Um, and so, sorry about my hand in the thing there. So, Physical preparedness. Guys, today's world affords us a lot of things. Um, it affords us the ability to have technology do so much for us. Um, for example, um, you know, I don't have to have communication with somebody in uh, a neighboring town, a neighboring state, by writing them a letter. I can, I can send them an email, I can send them a voicemail, I can talk to them on the phone. I don't have to physically go anywhere. Um, you know, in past history, if you wanted to talk to somebody, you sent them a letter and a messenger took it, or you went to the next town, whether you were riding on a donkey or riding on a horse or walking, um, what I call LPCs or your leather personnel carriers. That's kind of a military thing. It means your feet. Um, so, uh, you know, Today, in today's society, we have really gotten spoiled with just easy things like communication. Um, it doesn't take any any physical ability to do that. You can literally sit in a chair um, and pretty much talk to anybody you want that wants to listen to you. Um, but simple things like um, creating heat. Um, you know, it used to be that um, to create heat in a tent or in a cave or wherever you you know used to live back in the past in a in a any building you had to cut wood uh you had to bring in uh something that would burn you had to uh do the labor to cut the tree down you had to do the labor of splitting wood you had to haul it from wherever it was to the place where you're going to burn it um you know and that's just one thing um, you know, including building shelters, you know, that's not easy. That's a lot of lifting and building and cutting and, and lashing and cementing and all kinds of stuff that goes along with building things. Um, you know, and that's not even including things like catching food, um, growing food, gardening. Hey, I do a lot of gardening. I garden all year round. As you can see behind me here, I have my gardens, um... And I garden all year round. I grow lettuce, I grow garlic, I grow uh, onions, I grow broccoli and cauliflower, I grow all kinds of things. So I'm out in the garden in the fall and the winter probably once a week. In the spring and the summer, every day. Um, pulling weeds, that's physical labor. It's not, you know, a cardio thing, but it takes a lot of concentration and it takes a lot of bending and kneeling and stooping and standing and hauling and doing all kinds of stuff. Gardening is, is uh, um, a physical activity. You're moving. You're doing something. Um, you know, so that's, you know, what it takes to eat. Uh, let alone hunting uh, an animal and skinning it and hauling it back to wherever you live or wherever you're at to, to cook it and cut it. And, you know, that's everything you will do in a survival situation takes physical fitness. Now, that also goes into some of our previous videos about uh, food, uh, different types of food and nutrition. Uh, 
you're going to be burning a lot of calories in a survival situation. Um, just alone with with the the mental fatigue that's going to happen and, and that can happen um, that burns calories along with everything else you're gonna have to do and if your body is physically fit it can burn calories a little more efficiently and it knows and you will know how it reacts under certain stresses um, and so that's what I'm talking about here guys um, so just a little bit about um, my history. I have always been a person who's been involved in physical fitness. Um, I went to college uh, to be a physical fitness uh, teacher and uh, decided that was not the thing I wanted to do. I ended up getting um, my college degrees in related fields but not teaching. Um, I was in the military and that's one of the things you do all the time. You're always out doing what we call physical training, PT, running. You're running, you're working out in the gym, you're uh, doing all kinds of things. And you do it almost every day. Um, you know, and so when, when I uh, got out of the military and I was still doing law enforcement stuff, one of the things I started doing was I was running um, because I enjoy it. Um, and uh, I was... Uh, doing a lot of running right before I had the stroke. I was running 5Ks, um, and when I had the stroke, that pretty much took it away. Um, so I had to figure out, um, because some of the things that, that, that happened, along with vision problems, um, I had to adapt. Um, I realized that running was not a good idea for me. It wasn't safe. Um, and so I had to come up with some more ideas. And one of the things that I came up with is I still enjoy doing walks. I will go on a walk with my wife, I'll go on a walk with my kids, I'll go on a walk on my, with myself, and you know, one mile turns into two miles, two miles turns into three miles. And one of the, um, you know, I try to go a little bit further, a little bit faster. Um, and one of the, one of the things that, that I really find about physical fitness is that when I, the days that I do physical fitness, I tend to have a better attitude around, around things um, because I can work out some of the stresses and the aggressions and the, you know, the crumbs that happen during the day. I can kind of get those things worked out and, uh, and I get a little bit of fun out of it too. Um, I get a little bit of instant satisfaction because when you're done and you're all sweaty and, uh, you feel like you've done something during the day. Um, and so really what it is, is for those of you out there who uh, may not have any sort of physical fitness activities that you do, um, it's a great place to start uh, just getting up and moving and walking around and doing, doing something, you know. Um, I used to teach a class um, when I was doing some corporate health promotion stuff. I used to teach a class on everyday activities that can bring health to you. For example, you know, you can take a, a broom and sweep your driveway or sweep your, your walkway or whatever and do it a little bit faster than you normally do. Um, you might look a little goofy, but I guarantee you, your arms are going to be a little bit more uh, worked out at the end rather than just sweeping at a normal, easy pace. Um, you know, you can do simple, simple things like that. Um, you know, if you're going to sit down and if you're the kind of person that sits down and watches a lot of TV, stand up and watch a lot of TV. You know, stand up and march in place while you're watching that 30-minute sitcom or, or whatever it is. Even this video, I would hope that maybe you're standing up thinking, hey, maybe we could watch the tribulation guy, uh, you know, watching uh, this video and, and doing some marching in place. Simple things. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot to get... Um, to a place where you're ready to move to the next level. For example, um, I had, and I may have said this in, an, in another part of the video, if, if I did, well, you get to hear it twice, but, um, you know, I had, I, I'm not going to dwell on this, but I had a stroke. Well, that caused me a short time later to have a heart surgery to fix the problem that I had. And that caused, the result of that was about three months of sitting, um, 
and, and, and it was very difficult for me because I'm not the type of guy who just sits around. And I, I mean, even, even today, um, you know, I'm going to do three, four, five, six things and I probably won't get to sit down for too long because I, I just, I'm not that type of guy. Um, and, uh, so, um, I've kind of forgot where I was at, but, oh yeah. So the three months that I literally was told to just sit and, and do nothing and let my heart do the healing that it needed to do. Um, they were difficult. Um, but I still stood up and walked around the house a little bit and kept my blood moving. Um, you know, simple, simple things. Um, you know, and a lot of people that I was around, including my family, they wanted to do things for me, which is cool. Um, and that was hard for me too, but I really wanted to get up and around. And so I did. Um, I walked around the house a little bit, a little bit more every day, and I was doing something. Well, the, uh, the moment that I got the green light from the heart doctor to, uh, get back into doing some physical activity and uh, they let me off the leash boy oh boy uh, was one of the happiest days I've had in a long time um, and I knew uh, I was ready to get back into some fitness but you know um, having the education that I have and the knowledge of doing this in the past I knew I wasn't gonna go from zero to a hundred miles an hour in three days or instantly so I started doing simple things. Um, I started just lifting a couple of cans of soup, which is what I had. Um, I learned to uh, walk a block, walk two blocks, make that into three blocks, walk around the neighborhood, you know. Um, those types of things slowly build up. Because one of the, one of the, I don't know what you want to call it, one of the, the points where people tend to make a mistake is they want to get fit and in today's society you get instant satisfaction all the time um, but in physical fitness you can't um, it takes you know days weeks months years all piled in together you know on top of each other to get to a point and you know we're not all professional athletes here um, even if I don't it's a goal to work towards um, so it's it's all about not doing too much right away and working yourself into it and you're going to come into um some pitfalls if you will or some stumbling blocks guys when you start a fitness exercise routine or however you're gonna you're gonna do it um your body is going to kind of go through some changes you're going to see some muscle building you're going to see some uh easier breathing um you know it's going to start off with maybe some difficulty uh catching your breath because uh you know your body's not quite ready for it but you'll get there um you know it's it's all about small steps but in the in the course of all that you're going to have uh, your body breaking down things and one thing that that a lot of people may not know is that when your body gets ill viruses and those types of things um, your body doesn't just um, get over and be gone with it a lot of times your body will store those illnesses in fat cells and it encases them in the fat cells and basically holds them in jail if you will and when you start burning fat and when you start losing weight and you start doing those things sometimes you're going to get some of those um, illnesses released back into your body again um, it happens to me um, and um, it's it has happened to me before and you know you're gonna get sick um, but don't let that break you down don't let that stop you um, you don't have to necessarily work through it um, let your body recover. Let your body get ready to fight that. And then when your body's ready, get back and start working again. You'll find out that you're not going back to ground zero every single time. Um, it's just a process of slowly making that progress forward and forward and forward. And having the mentality of, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to make myself into you know, a fit person to the whatever my, whatever your goal is um, and 
personally, my goal is I, I've never wanted to be a bodybuilder. I've never wanted to be some uh, gym rat. I've never wanted to be... Um, as a matter of fact, going to the gym is not a fun thing for me. I would rather do a workout at home. Um, but I've never wanted to be some, you know, Adonis-type guy with it looks like, uh, you know, somebody you'd see on Muscle Beach. That's It's just not, that's not ever my goal. My goal is to be able to do the things that I want to and need to do during the day, and that includes um, in a survival situation. If I am called upon to break a window in a car, or if I'm called upon to, and that was like on the law enforcement side, if I'm called to uh, run into a burning building and save somebody out of there, or try to, you know, if I'm called to uh, climb a tree, or whatever, you know, the case may be, um, I want to be able to at least try to do the best that I can to, to perform that, that uh, task, you know. Um, and I don't want to be the guy who's the liability, who's, oh, I guess I'm out of breath, I'm out of breath, and you've been doing this 10 seconds. You know, I don't want to be that guy. Um, and, um, you know, I've always been, one of my philosophies um, as a leader, when I went through leadership classes, um, I developed, and uh, I kind of already had it, but I developed the, the thought process of leading from the front, leading by example. Um, not just telling people, hey, this is what you're going to do, and then, you know, go do it, and then I'll stand back and watch you. That's that's manage management, not leadership. Um, and I was a little bit of both. I believe in leading from the front, which is one of the things why I'm why I'm doing this this YouTube channel. I, I'm trying to lead you guys in a situation, or not in a situation, but lead you guys in a direction that... that uh, that you're ready uh, to, to do whatever you have to do in a fleeing situation or an emergency situation. And I hope that I'm able to do that too. You know, for example, um, you know, where I live, there are lots of trees. And tornadoes come through here every now and again. Um, but windstorms come through all the time. And, you know, if I can't go out and cut down limbs off of a tree because I physically can't do it, well, then I need to start working on something to get myself to that point. Um, you know, and help out my, my neighbor, um, help out myself, help out my family, you know, those types of things. So physical fitness is super duper important. And uh, one of the things that I moved on to, um, trying to get to this level where I'm at, and I'm, I'm nowhere at a place where I want to be yet. Um, I'm working on it. Uh, I work out three to four times a week, sometimes a little bit more, depending on how uh, my joints feel and my muscles feel. Um, but I found um, that, <clears throat> especially during the lockdowns, that working out at home was foreign to me. But it was also something that I felt I could do um, in the privacy of my own home without anybody looking at me like I'm goofy. Um, and, I, you know, I, I really don't care what other people think, but I don't want to be the goofy dude in the gym. And I don't want to pay for that. So I uh, did some looking on different videos, different uh, platforms on, on ways to do fitness at home. And um, I ran into a couple of things. The first thing I ran into are people that are exactly the, the person that I don't want to be. The Mr. I've got, you know, biceps bigger than my thighs type guy. Um, I ran into uh, men and women wearing pretty much not a whole lot while they're working out. Um, you know, I don't want to see that. Um, you know, and I don't think God wants us to see those uh, those things. And so I ran into I ran into a lot of things, and then I ran into also where a lot of the music that they play while they're doing their workouts um, was very. Uh, was something that I wouldn't normally listen to. Um, it was very secular and very uh, inappropriate um, stuff that I wouldn't I, I wouldn't let my kids listen to, and and so I didn't want to listen to that garbage either. Um, and what I what I found was I found some videos. I'm trying to get this to a little bit better spot here. 
Um, what I found were some videos by a, um, a husband, husband and wife uh, couple, um, and it's called Team Body Project. Um, and I'm not endorsing them. Um, I, it's not a paid endorsement. Um, I don't even subscribe to their channel. I, I take that back. I subscribe to their channel, but I don't have a paid subscription. They do have that option. Um, but I just go on the YouTube and find whatever kind of video I want to I do that day, and then I do it. Um, you know, there's so many options. There's beginner things, there's advanced, there's uh, intermediate, there's sitting, there's standing, all kinds of all kinds of uh, different types of workout videos for everybody. Um, and it's fun, and they dress appropriately. Um, there's it's it's all rated G, and so I do those workouts. I've been doing them now for over a year and a half, just over a year and a half. And uh, you know I've done a lot of the videos over and over again because I just enjoy doing those workouts. Um, but they come up with new stuff all the time, and again it's free. Um, that's one of my favorite prices, guys. Free. There's so much stuff out there that you don't have to pay for that is is available to you and me that um, we can use and if it's out there and it's good quality and I've you know I've done my homework to 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 determine that then why pay for a gym membership 20 30 40 bucks and you know have to drive across town in the rain and the snow and the and deal with the mask and deal with the whatever you know the crowd at the machine I want to get on or whatever I don't have to deal with that. Um, and so, you know, that's what I've decided to do. Um, but simple things, like gonna, I'm going to go back, I'm not going to rehash the whole thing, but simple things around the house. Cutting wood, sweeping your driveway. Um, clean your house, listen to some really good music, some some pumped up music, something that gets your blood going. And uh, you'll find that you get some enjoyment out of it. Um, you'll find that... It starts to become easy after a while, and that's that's your body uh, responding to the stress that you're putting on it and ready for more. So, um, again, you know, for example, um, one of the things that my wife and I are working on, both of us here at Tribula Tribulation Ready Survival, is we will strap on our uh, BOB or SLB, and we will start to walk uh, a mile, walk two miles. Um, I know that my SLB weighs 36 pounds, and you know that's everything. That's everything I I think I'm going to need. Probably some that I don't, and may get tossed out as I walk down the road. But um, I know it's 36 pounds. Um, I don't want to go any heavier, and. I know that I can walk two miles in it comfortably. I know I can go three miles in it comfortably. Um, you know, I know that after I take it off that things like my hips are really worked out and it starts to build muscle. And so, you know, if I'm going to have to walk a long time with my SLB, um, then I need to be ready to be able to do that. And uh, my wife understands that too. And so I would encourage you... Um, so start doing simple things around your house, around your yard, uh, helping out a neighbor, mowing the grass, doing something. Get out, get moving, and um, once you've got your SLB put together, we're still uh, going over some topics um, containing that or pertaining to that, but um, I encourage you to start doing those simple things and then work your way up to strapping on your BOB, SLB, and... Um, walking. Walk down the street, walk down the block, you know. Um, one of the things that, and you know, you don't want to look goofy by being the only guy walking down through the neighborhood with a, a backpack on, but go to your one of your local parks and walk through the park. You'll fit in with everybody else. Um, but I'm telling you, simple things, guys, working up to bigger and better things. Physical fitness is important, and... Uh, I find that um, it makes me feel a whole lot better during the day. And so, 
with all that being said, it comes down to, to, to really this. If you're watching this channel, I would hope that you are getting into the Word, that you are praying, that you are um, thirsting for more knowledge uh, about God and about the things that are going on around you. Sorry about the camera again. The things that are going on around you and where we are in history. Um, because if you're taking care of your spiritual house, you need to be taking care of your physical house too. Because we are the temple. We are God's temple. And, you know, every now and again, you got to sweep that uh, floor in the temple. And get the stuff out of there. Get it all fresh and clean. And, and uh, so if you're taking care of your spiritual temple, you can also take care of your physical temple. I think you should feel, uh, feel good about it. And God has built your body, everybody's body, to some degree to be able to be physically capable of reaching some level of physical activity. Guys, thank you for spending time today with me on uh, this channel. Please like, subscribe. We're still pushing towards 50 subscribers. And uh, we hope that uh, you will like and subscribe. Please comment down at the bottom. We uh, encourage any comments down at the bottom. And I also encourage you to visit my uh, friend. His his YouTube channel is Pond Hopper TV here on YouTube. Um, he and I do a lot of uh, fishing and uh, it's a good way to learn to do some survival stuff there as far as feeding yourself. And uh, with that guys, have a great day and uh, I'll see you on the next episode. All right, hey guys, just finished a 44, 45 minute workout uh, with one of my favorite workout programs. Um, I'll post some pictures here along with this. Uh, just to let you know uh, that I believe as far as being ready for the tribulation and surviving it, I think that you have to uh, not only have your spiritual house in order, in order but you have to have your you have to have your physical house in order guys and that strength comes from God and he will give it to you if you put the hard work into it and i have no doubt in my mind that God has blessed me richly with the physical fitness that i have and he has given me the ability to recover from a stroke and heart surgery and I have been working out regularly as much as I can sometimes three to four times a week sometimes a little bit less depending on how I'm feeling because I still have some uh, leftover things from the stroke but I'm not gonna let those get me down and I refuse to quit and that's the mentality that we have to have as the remnant we have to have that mentality of no matter what happens, God has got my back. And he's going to make things happen that I'm not even sure that I could even fathom. And uh, guys, I would encourage you to do something. And that's really what it boils down to. Um, I started out doing workout videos like this here and, and just doing something. I had about three months where the doctor told me, after the heart surgery, you need to relax, take it easy, don't do a whole lot of any physical exertion. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And uh, it was, for me, a guy who's always doing something, uh, pretty miserable. But the one when they uh, gave me the A-OK, -okay, hey, okay, it's time for you, to start, for you to start doing something physical and kind of get up and around and do something, I took advantage of it. And uh, I didn't go 
full force. I didn't go guns a blazing. And uh, sorry, I got the camera there, but I started off with doing simple things walking around the house, walking up and down the street, which was only about a block. And then I started doing some workout videos that were for beginners, just really easy workouts for 10 minutes. The fact of the matter is, when it comes to physical fitness, um, I am not a physical fitness professional, so to speak. Um, I have I have a degree in corporate health promotion and physical education, but that doesn't qualify me as a fitness instructor. The fact of the matter is, there's one thing about getting fit, and that is move. Get up, walk around, do something, move. And then once that becomes easy, move on to something else. Um, you know, I started with walking around. I started finding, looking for videos to do that were simple. Um, I do mainly team body project videos. You'll see back here behind me, this is not an endorsement or a paid endorsement. I'm just showing you what I do in the basement of my house. Um, that way, if I'm looking goofy while I'm working out, nobody cares. Um, and they're free, again. Guys, there's so much free stuff out there, that's my favorite price. And my kids can attest to it. Free. <laughs> um, there's so many of these workouts up here. They're all rated G. Um, there's no skimpy clothing involved or um, pretty people or people that are, you know, looking like <clears throat> something that's unclean. Un, un, uh, but these people just wear regular workout clothes and they, they have fun while they're doing it. And I enjoy doing the workouts. There's hundreds of them on all different levels. Um, you know, I started out doing the beginner ones. This is just a, a moderate one. And uh, they do modifiers. So you can do low impact, which is what I do because I'm at a point where arthritis is starting to catch up to me and and, uh, and my joints hurt a lot of times. So I still get a great workout in. And uh, guys, I just want you to know, um, here at Tribulation Ready Survival, uh, myself and my wife, me and Donna, we are working on these things. We are trying to be uh, ready so that when things happen, we're ready to react.